All right, welcome back to another video of SAT prep. And I'm assuming that you're gonna be taking the March SAT. So why don't we get started and let's get ready. So question one, Salim wants to purchase tickets for a vendor to watch a tennis match. The vendor charges a one-time service fee for processing the purchase of the tickets. The equation T is equal to 15N plus 12 represents a total amount T in dollars Salim will pay for N tickets. What does 12 represent in the equation? So looking at the equation, you can tell that 12 is what? It's going to be your y-intercept your y-intercept is always the base fee so what is the base fee it's the one-time service fee so that's going to be your answer meaning your answer should be b the amount of the service fee because 12 is your y-intercept the y-intercept always represents the base price or like a price that's already known moving on question two a gardener buys two kinds of fertilizer. Fertilizer A contains 60% filler material by weight, and fertilizer B contains 40% filler material by weight. Together, the fertilizers bought by the gardener contain a total of 240 pounds of filler material. Which equation models the relationship where X is the number of pounds of fertilizer A and Y is the number of pounds of fertilizer B? What are these really long questions? But well, anyways, so basically, filler A, I mean fertilizer A contains 60% filler material, so that's, <clears throat> that's represented by X, right? So it's going to be 0.6X plus the 40% filler material by B, 0.4, and Y, it represents fertilizer B. And that gives you a total of 240 pounds, right? 60% of fertilizer X and 40% of fertilizer B should give you a total of 240 pounds. So this is your equation, and what should your answer be? It should be B. Okay, question three. This is a shorter question. What is the sum of the complex numbers 2 plus 3i and 4 plus 8i, where i is equal to square root of negative 1? So dealing with imaginary numbers isn't too difficult, as long as they're just i's. If they're i squares, i to the third, i to the fourth, anything besides for just normal i, then you have to compute them using uh, conjugates and everything. But in this case, you don't actually have to do anything, because 2 plus 3i, and the sum of that, you just add them, 4 plus 8i, that's equal to what? 2 plus 4 is 6. 3i plus 8i. You just add them like normal variables, like 3x plus 8x. What does that give you? 11x. So in this case, it's just 11i. Right? You just add up 3 plus 8, and you just carry the i. So meaning your answer should be c. 6 plus 11i. Moving on, question 4. In the equation above, p and t are constants. Which of the following could be the value of p? So looking at this, you have to be able to recognize 4x squared minus 9. This is simply just the difference of squares. x squared minus y squared. So what is 4x equal to as x squared? It's going to be 2x, right? 2x times 2 is x is 4x squared. And 9 is the square of 3 squared. So x squared minus 3 squared, that's 2x squared minus 3 squared, right? So what are the factors? It's going to be 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Because x squared minus y squared is equal to x plus y times x minus y. So in this case, 2x plus 3 2x minus 3. Right, so if you watched my previous video on uh, the difference of squares, x squared minus y squared, and how to use them, you know that it factors out to this, and then you just use the factors and you factor out. So what's the value of p? p is this value, the first value, right? In this case, it's going to be 2. Meaning the answer has to be a. So let's go on to question 5. This is a pretty big question, a lot of graphs. Question five, which of the following is the graph of the equation y is equal to 2x minus five in the xy plane? So this is written in slope intercept form. So let's look at the intercept first. And it has a y intercept of negative five, meaning it's gonna be zero, negative five as the y intercept. So looking at um, graph A, you can tell that it doesn't have a slope or a y intercept of negative five, right? It's all the way up here. It's gonna be two point something. So it's not gonna be A. Looking at this, y intercept of five, yep right down here, and y-intercept of negative 5 right down here. So B and D are your choices, because C has a y-intercept of 5, not negative 5. So you cross out C. Now, we have to look at the slope. So what's the slope? It's going to be 2x. I can tell it's a positive slope. What's a positive slope? It means it points in this direction. This is positive. If it were negative, it goes down in this direction. So looking on your graphs, this goes down in this direction. So that's a negative slope, which is what the question is asking for. B's out, and D has to be your answer, because it's a positive slope. 2 is a positive number going up. And that's question 5. Question 6. If x is equal to 2 thirds y and y is equal to 18, what is the value of 2x minus 3? So let's just solve for x given y. Plug it in. x is equal to 2 thirds times 18. 
And what's 2 thirds of 18? X is equal to 12. Now we know the value of X, so we plug that in to your question. So it's going to be 2X, which is 2 times 12 minus 3. 2 times 12 is 24. 24 minus 3 is 21. Giving you an answer of A. Question 7. A bricklayer uses the formula N is equal to 7LH to estimate the number of bricks N needed to build the wall that is L feet long and H feet high. Which of the following correctly expresses L in terms of N and H? So we have N is equal to 7LH. And we have to isolate L. So what I'll do, divide both sides by 7H. Because if you do that, 7s cancel out. H's cancel out. Just giving you L is equal to N over 7H. What's on this side, just carry over, cross, cross. You just have L. So L is equal to N over 7H, meaning your answer should be C. Question 8. The cable above shows some values of the function W and T. Which of the following is W of X plus T of X equal to X? Now, this might be very confusing for you guys. Basically, what that means is that when you add these two values, w of x and t of x, it, sh it should equal this. We add them up. So negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 does not equal 1. So it's not going to be 1. Um, let's try 2. Negative, I mean, 3 plus negative 1 is 2. So this does work. Let's try 3. 4 plus 1 is 5, which is not equal to 3. So this is out. And lastly, 3 plus 3 is 6, which is not equal to 4. So these three are out. I mean, your only choice possible is B, 2, right? Because all they're asking is this value plus this value has to go to this value. So negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 2. 2 is equal to 2. And that's it. That's why B should be your answer choice. This one's a very special question. Probably won't show up, but if it does, that's how you explain. Now, question 9. If the square root of x plus the square root of 9 is equal to the square root of 64, what is the value of x? So this question is pretty interesting. And why? Because it's actually pretty easy, right? Square root of x plus, what's the square root of 9? That's equal to 3. That's equal to the square root of 64, which you guys know is 8. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 64 is 8. Now we just minus 3 on both sides. Giving you the square root of x is equal to 8 minus 3, which is 5. Because 3 minus 3 cancel out. Now, the square root of x is equal to 25. You guys probably know it off the top of your head. If you don't. You can just square both sides. Square root and square cancels out. Give you x is equal to 5 squared, which you should know off the top of your head is 25. 5 times 5 is 25, meaning your answer has to be C for the value of x. Mm -hmm. So this is part one of SAT multiple choice review. Let's come back in the next part where I'll go over next questions and the short answer questions. See you guys soon, and thank you guys for watching.